Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to jump back on the AT1MX Yamaha. Uh, as you know, I've got a standard Enduro cylinder, 1972, with the reed valve. And in order to get our MX specs, I've got a uh, I've got the data supplied by Yamaha at the time, uh, back in the day, and I've got an enduro cylinder and I'm going to transfer uh, those specs to the enduro cylinder. Uh, I don't know that much about porting. Uh, I'm going to leave that stuff to the experts. Uh, the only thing I've got and I know is if I have specs, I can transfer it to uh, my cylinder. But for me to just take a cylinder and say, hey, I think it needs to come up three millimeters and get uh, a, another millimeter wider, I, I don't know that. And it's, from what I understand, it's pretty complicated. So I'm just not going there. I'm going to try to get the specs from the spec sheet to my cylinder and just do the best I can. And we're going to leave it at that. Uh, but, you know, as far as uh, changing things, I'm not going to do it. And really, I'm a little bit against widening anything, especially the exhaust and the intake, because you get into the area where you can start hooking your rings in there. Uh, this specs that I have does show some widening, and I will probably do that. But I'm not going to do any more than that because that's where you run into you know you work you do all this work to an engine and you take it out and you hook a ring and blow up your cylinder the first day so I'm going to go with the known and press on from there so let me get you overhead and I'll show you what we're going to do okay here's my uh, my specs I've got the Enduro specs here on this side, the Enduro, and the AT2MX here. And if you take a look at these, uh, you can find this stuff online if you, uh, if you just do a search for, uh, for porting for uh, AT2, Enduro, motocross, whatever. It's there, that's where I got it. So you can find it there too if you so desire. Uh, but if you'll take a look at most of this, it has to do with uh, you're measuring everything from the top of the cylinder and you can see this one's at 30 millimeters and this one is at 26. So we're raising, we're raising that port up. Uh, for the most part, you're not going to take anything off the bottom of any of these. You're, you're only going to raise the tops and in this situation here on the exhaust, we're going from a 35 for width to a 38. These are all millimeters. And, you know, the transfers are, there's a little difference there, but not a lot. Uh, again, then the, the intake is the other big one. And here you've got your boost port that's involved here too. And you're actually, uh, I, I think this is a little strange. I'm not sure whether we've got some problems with this or what. But see, this one is at 18, so it's showing it already wider than the motocross version. So I'm probably not going to mess with this because I don't want to... I, I don't know whether they've got these two transferred around the numbers or whatever. But I'll go ahead and raise this and widen it here but i'm not going to change the width of the boost port at this point unless i can find some other data but these are the things that uh you know you just don't know and this this stuff was it was all put together 50 years ago so this is what we've got and this is this is how we're going to be able to do it. It's the only thing. But anyhow, 
just keep in mind that you're never measuring anything from the bottom. It's always from the top of the cylinder. And for the most part, you're only raising. You're not, uh, you know, this one's 30, this one now it's going to be 26. Uh, this one is 42 and now it's 39. And this one's 42 and now it's 38 and so on and so forth. So, but there's some errata points in here that I don't get and this is one of them. And then another one I see is here. Uh, we've got a 51 down to the bottom of the transfer and this one is at 50.5. So I, I assume they're wanting to lower that just a little bit. But when you get something like this, that makes me question things. So anyhow, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think about this a little bit, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and get started on the preliminaries and we'll see what we can do. I don't know how much of this you're going to be able to see. I'm going to try to set the camera up so you can see uh, me actually cutting the cylinder. Uh, but you know, I probably won't be able to show that much. It's just a, it's a 125. It's really a small cylinder. Uh, I guess I should just be thankful. It's not a, not a 50 because that would really be hard to see in there, but I've got all my equipment, I think, and we're going to go into that now. All right. Uh, this bothers me so much that I, I wanted to check it. So I, best I could for checking this. It is three millimeters, so it's, that's a, a pretty good difference. So you don't have to be real accurate. Um, yeah, see that's, this is about three millimeters here. So that would definitely show up. Uh, let me show you how I check this. Uh, and again, the Enduro, they're saying it's the boost port is at 18 millimeters in width. And on the uh, MX, they're saying it's 15. So I don't know what they're, you know, why would it be narrower than the Enduro one? And I just took the cylinder I've got here. And there's really no way to get up in there to, to measure it with this. So... What I did was I just laid a ruler. You know, this is just a gee whiz, pretty close thing. And I just set this up like this and drew a line on both sides. And when I measure that line out, if I go to the outside of the line, it's at about 17.44. I think you can see that. So I'm I'm betting that this one is 18. So I don't know what they're. I think they're probably wanting to increase the width on that, but I'm not going to do it unless I can find some more data uh, to change my mind. I'm going to have to look through a couple of my uh, service manuals. I think some of the data is also in there. So I'll look and do a little more research before I get to that. i got a long way to go. Uh, I can go ahead and start shaping some of these others out. But I just wanted to kind of verify what I was dealing with there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and on the upper and the, and the side of all these ports, uh, I'm going to put some blue dicum. This is a layout fluid. It's machinist dye. Uh, it basically does the same thing as this Sharpie did right here. It's uh, just a little easier to, to deal with because it's got a wider brush on it. Uh, actually, I'll probably use a, an acid brush to do it. It just does a, a little bit better job than the one that's in, in there. But I'm just going to go through and put a little bit of that along the top here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a I'm going to take a piston ring 
and I'm going to push this down with the piston let's just take for instance uh, where we're doing this one here so we're going to go from 30 on the enduro to 26 okay I'm having some audio stuff here so I'm I'm doing this portion that uh, was in one clip after I actually uh, ported the cylinder uh, I'm explaining about how I'm going to keep a straight line and get my dimensions right and what I was doing was I was putting a, 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 a piston ring in there and in the case of this 26 millimeter for the exhaust port we're just going to push this down until we get, I've got my 26 here and it still needs to go down a little bit that's probably too much but that'll actually be good because now oops of course I just fumbled my caliper here and messed it up okay all right but what we do is we we take our caliper and put it down here and then bring the piston ring and the piston I'm using the piston to push it with up until I hit the bottom of it right there so that is where we're going to come up to with our with our grinder that's our cut that's the the upper portion of our cut should be right there and it it allows you to keep a good straight line and you just take your uh, your scribe and remember we've got bluing in here and you just take and mark your your bluing like this and that way it'll it'll give you that line you need so that keeps everything square and straight as you go around and once you get that scribed then just remove your piston ring and then go ahead and start your start your cutting okay let's get some uh, bluing in there they give you kind of a short brush there so I'm just going to use an acid brush and really all we've got to do is just paint the above them Trying to keep up with the light here. I don't want to blind you, but you got to be able to see in here. And I've got to widen the exhaust and a little bit of the intake.
so it so I can uh, see the line I'm going to scratch hopefully all right let's let that dry all right I think this is pretty dry now so uh, first thing I'm going to do is is uh, get my ring in here and I'm going to I'm going to work on the exhaust port first so I'm going to put the gap away from it take my piston I just happen to have a a uh, standard one here that's what this cylinder is right now is standard so I'll be going to first over I don't know if you've noticed or not but it it had been abused there's some like it was hammered on right here uh, the ceiling surface is is fine but some of this will come out with a bore and of course it'll be straightened up but I, th I think that'll be okay uh, I just you know it's it's standard and that's what's really hard to come by these days and and I've got my my little map over here again and I'm working on this 26 millimeter from the top of the surface that's that's the first thing I'm going to do here and I'm just going to get my my 26 millimeter I did zero this out first alright and then tighten up my stop and that's what will be Got quite a ways to go yet. I think I've probably gone a little too far, so I'll put the piston in from the other way, check it, and then push it up there to touch the still at 26 millimeter check it a few places around here I know the lights bad guys okay Okay, so at that point, I'm going to take my scribe and mark it. And then I can take my ring out. if you can see this well I just I'm not able to get the light where I need it uh, maybe there I just don't know whether you're going to be able to see it, but here's the line right here, and here's the edge of the port. So uh, that's that's quite a quite an enlargement, and they're going to want us to enlarge the uh, the width of it just a little bit. I think it's uh, I'll have to look at the other one, but uh, the main thing on these is the upward.
is the upward uh, cut. The side is, it does help. And the, uh, you see how round these edges are right here. For high RPM use, uh, if you bring these on up to more of a square, it wouldn't be square, but it would be more square than it is now. It's more oval there. But if you bring just the top up to where it's more square in line with the top, then it helps your high RPM range. But from what I understand, most of the high RPM uh, comes not so much from the porting, but from the pipe and the header pipe to be more exact. But, you know, I, like I said, I'm not uh, very well versed on this. I've just read some stuff. I've watched a few videos on it. And that's kind of the gist that I get is the more square up here in line it does help, but the pipe is uh, the biggest player on these. Okay, I hope you can see this a little better. Uh, I've drawn the lines for my width here also on both sides. I'm not sure how good this is going to show up. GoPros are not real good for close-up. Um, but uh, you can see that it's square up here. I'm not going to do that. But, you know, I'm going to round these corners. Keep them round. But it, I'm going out another millimeter on both sides. It actually tells me to, to go out uh, uh, three millimeters. But I'm going to keep it a little bit conservative and go at uh, uh, a millimeter on each side and then the, the three millimeter at the top and I'm going to maintain this somewhat of a circular pattern up here at the top just as it is now. But I just don't think you're going to be able to see much but I will try. Just about got it opened up to the area that I want. So now I just need to smooth back. First thing I did was a, I cut the liner out to where my line was along both sides here and the top. And now what I'm doing is I'm blending this.
and when I get it to where I want it, then I'll use the cartridge. So you can see now this is the top up here and I'm blending this back into this area here. And about there I'm going to get ready to get the cartridge roll in there and start smoothing this out. But it's just really hard to, to see. It's hard for me to get in there let alone uh, try to get a camera in there too. So doing the best I can but uh, that's all I can do. All right, I think I'm just about done. I've got a little polishing left to do, but all in all, I think we're about done with the major removal. We increased the, uh, uh, the area here, and we went up, and the transfer ports all went up. And the exhaust did, of course. So that should be to the 1972 AT2M or MX, whatever you want to call it. The, for some reason they called it an M that year instead of an MX, but the meaning was still the same. So I'm just going to finish up polishing a little bit and then we'll probably head into boring. You can see also that we have a little bit of uh, casting slag here. I'm going to try to remove some of that.
And what I'll do here before I uh, finish up, I'll get my gasket, put it on here, and we'll match the gasket and the uh, cylinder and clean up some of these transfer ports as they go in. A little more casting slag in here. All right. Okay, just another little look at it before I get it ready to bore. Maybe too much light. All right, guys, there we go. Got her all cleaned up now. Um, again, this is, it's really hard to see up in there, but I've got everything mapped out the way that it's supposed to be. And, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. It's about three hours worth of work. I'm sure that people that do it all the time uh, get it done a lot quicker. But quick's not always the right thing. Okay guys, that's about it. Got Got the cylinder all cleaned up, and uh, I think we're ready for the bore. I'll get that set up in the next day or two and see if we can get that done. Uh, that way I can go ahead and get the top end on the engine. Uh, like I said before, I'm not a professional at this. Uh, I just, I, I'm satisfied with what I've done because I've done this before. If I've got a map, showing me what to do. I can make the measurements. I can do the, the grinding. I can, I can get it done. But uh, I'm not a pro at it and don't claim to be. Uh, I, I think it'll get it done though. No. Uh, I wish that I could have got you in better to see what's going on. It's just so small. I know there's a, a few people on YouTube that does it. I think most of them are doing bigger cylinders for the most part, but uh, I don't know. They seem to have better camera angles and stuff than I do. Anyhow, this is, uh, I, I was able to get some shots of it, but not what I really wanted. So maybe one of these days, if I have got a bigger one, I'll try it again. And uh, maybe I'll have a little better luck being able to see what's going on. But anyhow, uh, we'll get to the boring. And uh, right now, I, I just got to thank you for going along on the ride. And we'll see you next video.